and sisters of Divivani TV viewers had to welcome to the word of God. to Ephesians chapter 5 verses 10 to 14. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the un unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I greet and bless all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Here I am to reflect with you a beautiful theme called what pleases God from our life. In other, word, in other words, what makes God smile at us? In what are the areas we can make God pleasing and smile at us? The basic purpose and goal of our Christian life is to please God and to make Him smile and give kind of excitement to the Lord so that He may shower more blessings on us. Therefore, immediately we go into the life of Noah. The story of Noah we know. During his time, when he, God opened his eyes and saw the beautiful creation and everyone was doing well, but in the time of Noah, he saw the whole world morally became bankrupt. People were disobedient. He was not pleased with anything because we see book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 6 where even God's heart was grieved looking at the humankind that was disobedient. And therefore, he looked all around and found that there was no one who can make him smile, who can make him happy, who can also help him to rebegin, rebuild the whole creation. And there he finds the beautiful man who made God smile and happy is called Noah. And he found the whole thing was bankrupt and God was disgusted and he was not happy. And therefore, he looked at Noah and he said, here is the man, here is the person who can make me smile. And therefore, he called out Noah and began to understand and help him and also found this man, Noah was a person who can make him smile, who can make him pleasing through his life. And how could Noah make God smile? How could Noah, along with his family, make God pleased? The first and foremost, even along with Noah, let us reflect how can we make our God, the Creator, smile and happy and pleasing. The first and foremost that we have is love God wholeheartedly. Love Him supremely. When we love God wholeheartedly and supremely, I am sure we are building up the relationship. Only by this relationship we can make God smile at us. And therefore, even in St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16, we read, God so loved the world first, Therefore, he sent his only begotten son for our sake. And when he saw the situation during the time of Noah, 
and he said this man pleases me therefore what he did was he selected him where we see in the book of genesis chapter 6 verse 9 these are the descendants of noah noah was a righteous man blameless in his generation noah walked with god and if you see your brothers and sisters in christ jesus prophet hosea also we read there god says i do not want any sacrifices but love i do not want any offerings from you but i want you to know me that's how the love how god could build once again the relationship between the human kind and himself and he wanted to renew the covenant he wanted to begin with everyone that covenant relationship with human kind and there the person called noah did love god completely and supremely because also we read here genesis chapter 6 verse 8 the word of god says when the whole human kind was not happy with god or god was not happy with human kind he says but noah found favor in the sight of the lord and therefore dear brothers and sisters when we love god supremely then we are making god smile we are making god happy we are making god also pleased through our lifestyle and second area a second way we can please god and make is complete trust trust god completely trust god with our faith or the trust or have faith in god and i would like to share with a beautiful story where once a father along with her daughter was crossing the river when both were about to begin the child sees the whole sea and get shocked and say dad i am scared i am frightened help me to cross this river and when they were walking over the bridge and the child looking at the water immediately cries out dad i am scared hold my hand and dad says if you are scared hold my hand and the child holds a dad's hand and walking little further middle of the sea again the child cries out and say dad water is terrifying i am scared help me hold my hand and again dad says hold my hand my child and child little more tightly holds the hand and the moment they were about to cross river child again cries out and says dad please help me i am scared of this water and the dad says hold my hand my child and now third time child in reply tells her dad dad instead of i holding your hand please you hold my hand two times the child was holding the hand of the father but the ter- third time when the dad who held the hand of the child it was complete two times was the child was holding hand of the father it was incomplete the third time when father her dad held the hand it was complete because the hand of god is bigger than the hand of the child that's what the complete trust the child had in her father therefore she said dad hold my hand now what no what did was the complete faith and trust in god he knew there was no one in spite of all that problems that were going on at the time of noah but bluntly he trusted god he believed in god and he obeyed god completely therefore he spoke to noah i am going to start again i am going to begin again the whole creation with you because i am pleased with you i am satisfied with you therefore god tells noah to start over again building the giant ship when he began to build the giant ship then god he was so happy to build again because he wanted once again see god smile he wanted to make god smile therefore dear brothers and sisters how can we make god smile in day to day life like we have the luke's gospel chapter 7 where the centurion complete faith in god jesus complete trust in jesus he came running 
asking for the healing word not for his son but for his slave that's what complete faith and we have very many incidents in the gospel the new testament where people came crying out we have the woman the woman was suffering with hemorrhage 12 years and she came and spoke to herself within her heart if only i touch his cloak i will be healed and that's what the complete faith or the complete trust and also we have dear brothers and sisters let it to hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 he talks about beautifully what it means of complete faith and trust chapter 11 verses 7 here he talks here by faith noah warned by god about events as yet unseen respected the warning and built an ark to save his household by this he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with the faith though there was chaos there was warning but still noah had trust in god had great faith in god just above that chapter 11 verse 7 we read the sixth verse and without faith it is impossible to please god for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him so without faith we cannot enjoy or we cannot make god pleased we cannot make god smile and without faith that's what it is impossible to please god and we have a beautiful person another personality is our blessed mother teresa saint mother teresa we call how could she please god through her service how could she really give god a treasure helping so many people in different categories of people different ways of the people she made god please through her service in every poor in every suffering in every deserved deserving cases he went to the people he walked with the people and she said i see christ in this poor person i see christ in this suffering person i see christ in this ordinary person disabled person and that's how through her service she pleased god she made god smile <laughs> and great person for the damian who also served the lepers who also served the human persons and he became a great person and these are the people and we have quite many where served god and served christ and saying made christ smile more and if you understand little more brothers and sisters that our faith in god our trust in god will enable us to please god more and help god more to do for our life in our life the third way where we can please god is whole hearted obedience whole hearted obedience it's not only the noah was completely exactly did what instructed him to do Ch- without changing any instructions to build that ship giant ship the ark he followed obeyed whole heartedly obeyed god without any disturbance distraction and he exactly did what god instructed him to do that's called obedience and if you see in our in the bible jesus himself when he began his public ministry it was not his own he began to do the god's will exactly 
Therefore, he could say in St. John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 34, My food is to do the will of my Father. He has entrusted to me to establish the kingdom. Invite everyone to this kingdom. Therefore, he obeyed till the end. And we have very beautiful Christological episode led to Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 onwards. And Jesus emptied himself and he became a servant and he suffered a lot and he emptied himself till the cross and dying on the cross. And that's what wholehearted obedience also makes God smile. And we have another beautiful person in the Bible with one word, great, yes, Mother Mary was so obedient and made God smile. Though the intervention of the angel Gabriel, but God, at the end he says, she said in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 38, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done according to your word. That's the beauty of the obedience that brings us pleasing God and making God smile. And also here we have another international or universal saint, St. Francis of Assisi, my founder. He says everything that God gave him and he obeyed God completely and tr with the trust and faith in God, he did exactly what God wanted him to do. To narrate a small story, he began uh, as a young boy to fight against Perugia and a neighboring town and on his way, he had a vision, the disturbed vision he had. And the voice spoke to him, Francis, Francis, whom do you want to serve? Master or the servant? And Francis of Assisi, he said beautifully, I want to serve my master. And the voice told him, go back to the town of Assisi. And there you see the church is falling into ruin. Build that church. And that voice helped him to be so obedient, immediately returned back to his place and began to rebuild the ruined church. It's not only the physical church there, also the people around. So, my dear brothers and sisters, how this wholehearted obedience will help us or enables us to please God in our day-to-day -day life. And we also come across the partial obedience at times saying that I go, for example, I go to the church, but I will not give tithe. I will read the word of God, the Holy Bible, but I will not love my neighbor. I will do this. I will go to the church to receive communion, but I will not participate full mass. And there we don't enjoy the miracles taking place. That is partial obedience is not God is not pleased by this. We need to have complete obedience in the wholehearted obedience. And we have so many examples in our Holy Bible. And fourthly, how can we make God pleased or smile? The abilities and availability. In my book, Tiny Seas, Tall Trees, the first chapter talks about the ability and availability. And God is always pleased with our abilities. And God has gifted us with very many talents. And mainly, God has gifted us with three T's. Time, treasure, and talents. If we are busy with these three T's, time, talents, and treasure, my dear brothers and sisters, God counts on them because he counted the ability of Noah. The ability of Noah was where he could bring every animal according to God's instruction. The ability was to build exactly what God, how God instructed him to do. The ability is counted. And God was pleased with the ability of Noah. God was pleased with the ability of Francis of Assisi. God was pleased with the ability of Zacchaeus in the Bible. He could bring, get back to his life and said beautifully, in Luke's Gospel chapter 19 verse 5 onwards we read, the ability of the Zacchaeus was, if I defrauded anybody, I give to the poor. I give back what I have earned wrongly. That's what ability. Ability is not only the physical experience, physically spoken of, 
but the abilities and availability was counted even the spiritual aspect. And we have letter to Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 onwards, the fruits of the spirit, they are abilities, love, kindness, generosity, these are gifted to us by God himself. And he is asking us in turn to make use of these abilities by be being available to the other person one who is in need. Because in today's world, my dear brothers and sisters, we are caught up between so many worldly affairs. We are caught between world, worldly God and also the God's world. We are caught up between all these calamities, atrocities. Therefore, we are not discovering our abilities. When we are available to God like Noah at any time, when we are available to God like Mother Mary, when God's plan came to her, when we are available to God by like the many saints, I am sure our abilities are disco uh, discovered. Our abilities are explored and that's what God expects us. Look at life of St. Paul as well. Look at the lives of the uh, apostles. They were just available to God when he, Christ called them. God did not see their abilities, but God has seen their availability and later and slowly they have discovered their abilities and they pleased Jesus himself throughout his public ministry. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, for us to understand that wholehearted, the abilities that we give to God and also available to God makes us more to discover our life and our journey with God, which is pleasing. And fifthly, how can we make God smile? Here talks about praise and thank Him continuously. We need to thank and praise God continuously and consistently because where Noah completely and in spite of so many problems that he encountered, he trusted God and he obeyed God and he praised and thanked God all the time. Because we have this and God smiles when we express our adoration and gratitude to him. Because this Noah expressed his adoration, gratitude to him for saving his family. And we have Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 where Noah offered God the sacrifice, first sacrifice by building an altar because the, his family was saved by God. By offering that to God, God was pleased. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, in our day-to-day life, day -day life, we need to please God. And we, by through our lifestyle, we can please God. We need to give God a full sacrifice and full thanksgiving. Look at our great king David. He prayed to God ten times a day. Out of ten times, seven times he praised and thanked God. Only three times he prayed for his problems. Though he was in great disaster, though he was in great disturbance because of that sin, but he praised God. He thanked God. That's what we re also read in Psalm 69, talking about they where he expresses praise and thanking God all the time. But dear brothers and sisters, we have in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to uh, 7, 16, 19, where he talks about God is not pleased with seven things. That he talks about haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deceives wicked plans, feet that hurry to run to evil, a lying witness who testifies falsely and one who sows discord in a family. God hates seven things because that will not please God and that does not make God smile. But let us end with a small question. In what are the areas in today's world with my busy world, with this technology, with this media world, with this 5G world, how can I make God smile or please God? There are so many issues come to us, but still, are we ever ready to make God smile because we are gifted with so many things? And through our baptism, we are adopted sons and daughters of God. How can I make God smile? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.